Hey guys, we are actually in Arkansas with Matt Outlaw from 731 Woodworks, and we're in his shop. So, you guys know who this guy is. <laughs> we made a sign for him a while back, and uh, we decided to come out to Arkansas and do some stuff with him. We're going to do a project together, and uh, we're excited about it. So thanks for having us, hey, man. This yeah. is going to be awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right, let's get to work. guys so the first thing we got to do is do the layout we got to get our picture onto the board so we have lines to carve we took the image and we used rapid resizer and then printed it out on label backer then all you got to do is trim it up and put the two pieces together like a puzzle piece when you print it out from rapid resizer you have to mirror the image because you're gonna put the ink side down Then you measure the board and find out exactly where you want it and you just tape the top of it down to make it nice and flat and make sure it stays. Then we use our depth gauge because it has a nice rounded edge and just rub it onto the board. Once you have all the ink on there the way you want it, then you just take your paper off and you're ready to go. Picked up some clear primer, right? Yeah. Primer. yeah. Well, it's it's a it's a, basically a spray lacquer in a can. Okay. But um, what we need to do is seal in this stuff because this ink is wet when we put it on. Mm -hmm. It's still wet when it's on there, and then when it dries, it rubs off really easily with on the on your hand if you're not careful. So we found that putting one or two coats of this on just kind of seals it in. Then it wouldn't it wouldn't rub off on your hands when you. That dries really fast. Yeah, it does. It, yeah, I sprayed this about uh, four minutes ago, mm -hmm. so it dries really really fast. Cool. So that will kind of seal that in. Now we'll have a good line to go by, and we can route that. So is that the next step, start cutting? I think it's time to make some sawdust. Sweet. Yeah, cool, let's do it. Now dad did all the carving on this and he did did it with the carving liner. It's a really fine tip bit and it works great for small lines like that. I'll put a link in the description below. These tiny little letters and tiny little lines took a lot of patience. You can't try to go too fast otherwise you're bound to mess it up. So everything on this project was cut inset which basically means you're cutting away the black line you're not cutting around it. So all the letters and the stars and everything, they're cut into the board and then we're gonna spray in black. When you're carving in general, but especially with tiny little letters and tiny little lines like this, you wanna make sure you have as much flesh on the board as possible for stability. Notice when dad's carving, he's got a lot of flesh on the board plus good control of the router and he's using his wrists to go around. He's not using his shoulders and all of his arms. Again, because these are so small, lighting is key. So we use the fairy lights on our routers to give us a little bit of extra lighting that really comes in handy with something like this. He also uses his cheaters. I don't use those, not that old yet, but my time's coming. So we'll have links to the fairy lights and then the cheaters also in the description. So because we have to insert the chargers from the back, 
we have to drill the, the big hole and the small hole all the way through. Dad uses the profile bit, again, link in the description, to make the outline for the big hole. And then he uses the quarter inch spiral upcut to go all the way through. Now you can't do this all in one step. You have to do it in stages. Go about, you know, an eighth inch at a time. It took dad maybe four or five times around to get all the way through this, this board. And then for the small hole, Matt just used a forstner bit and drilled right through. But we didn't have one that size for the big hole, so again, that's why Dad carved all the way through. The cord for the chargers is about an eighth of an, eighth of an inch thick, and we wanted it going out of the top. So dad just carved eighth inch grooves all the way down. That way the board would sit flat and the cords would be going up through the groove out to the back so you can plug it in. Then all we had to do was spray it black, let it dry, and again, you don't want to over spray. Once it dried, then Matt sanded it off to give a nice contrast between the carved lines and the board. So I want to fill this with epoxy just to give it a pop of color. I think that'll just make it look that much better. So I'm going to go with old log and epoxy art resin. And what this does, will set up very quickly within six or eight hours or so. So tomorrow morning, we'll be able to finish this up. You mix this one to one, and I'm just going to be using some syringes just to pull the exact same amount out of A as I do B. And I'm going to use these little aluminum tins that I have just to mix everything up. You want to make sure you mix this up very well, that way both A and B gets mixed together or it won't set up properly. It's not a big deal, just make sure you mix it up. Once that's mixed, I'm going to add white pigment to this one and we're going to put those at the top of the mountains for snow as well as in the stars. I think that's going to look really nice. I'm just going to use the syringe, a new syringe, and pull enough white in there and just fill all this in as best I can. I did take some tape, uh, just called tuck tape, and taped up as much as I could to hopefully dam this up so that it doesn't run. I think I was wrong though. <laughs> For the blue, I'm just going to use this deep blue color. I'm adding quite a bit more than I usually would because it's such a small feel. I want that color to kind of shine through, or at least that's my hope. Once I did that, I tried to figure out a better way to get it in these small lines. I do have these tiny tips that come with uh, CA glue. I tried that and it, it worked okay, but it kept coming off the end of the syringe. So I ended up just using the syringe itself and trying to do the best I can. let this set and then we'll come back and sand it.
tongue oil mix. This is one of my favorite finishes of late because it just looks so good. It's a natural finish, so food safe, that kind of stuff. And when you see it hit the epoxy, you're gonna see it really come to life, especially down here in this blue. Check this out. It's just a white scrub pad that uh, just helps get it into that wood. Grain. A little bit of stuff goes a very long way. And it smells good because it has that orange oil in it. I'll do about three coats of this. I'll let this dry for an hour or two and then come back with another coat, let it dry, another coat, and we'll be ready to install the chargers. So Matt had to shim the back of these chargers. That way they stayed in place. He used a scrap piece of walnut and cut it and sanded it to size to fit it right behind the big charger. And then he used a piece of half inch MDF for the small charger and he hot glued them in place. Now this is an important part because those chargers have to be flushed with a board in order to make contact with the phone and the watch to actually charge them. So Matt really took his time here to make sure that as soon as he turned that over that everything was nice and flush so it actually works. Perfect. No, I let a little bit of that epoxy bleed and I didn't get one of the ocean or the water lines filled properly all the way full. It's part of it. It's part of woodworking and it's part of creating something. It's always going to have those little odds and ends that just make it yours and make it unique. So I just enjoy that part of the, for the process. I wish I would have filled that up and I can always go back and do that if I wanted to, but it really isn't a big deal to me. I really like what this looks like. It does kind of look like a, a crazy looking face when you look at it like this. It's got like one big eye, one little eye, but when the Apple Watch or the phone is on there, it really completes the look. I love the mountains, the snow in the top of the mountains. It reminds me of Breckenridge, Colorado. I had the opportunity to go there a while back. Just a beautiful place. The water kind of reminds me of growing up. I do, did a lot of fishing and stuff like that, so that's kind of a good thing too. And just the adventure part just reminds me to kick every day in the teeth and get after it. All right, guys. Well, we uh, we finished the project. Had a blast doing it again. Thank you, Matt, for inviting us out. We just Thank had so much fun. It was awesome. Uh, so you guys know who this guy is, uh, is but if you don't, we're going to put a card in the end. Uh, it's uh, 731 Woodworks, obviously. And it was a pleasure being here and working with you, seeing your place. Just thank you again, Matt. Thank y'all for coming. It was amazing watching your talent uh, at work. Well. We do what we do, but thank you. We <laughs> thank appreciate you. that. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.